What's up, captains? So if you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw that I took a little break from posting on social media. And I want to give you a little update on what happened during those five days that seemed like an eternity that I was absent. Uh, two things mainly. Uh, first and most importantly, look at this. I found this really cool decanter at a thrift store. And I'm now going to be drinking my water out of this because it makes me look cool. So there you have it. This is my new water vessel. And uh, secondly, I wear rings now. So this is, uh, I also found this at the thrift store. This is Tiger's Eye inside Sterling Silver. Pretty cool. Pretty lame. What do you think? I don't care. I like it. Uh, so yeah, I wear rings now and I drink out of decanters. So I'm sorry you're not as cool as me yet. Just go to your local thrift store, pick up a cool looking decanter and find yourself some bling. <laughs> okay. But no, on a more serious note, uh, I spent the majority of that time working on updating the captain's lifestyle program, something that has not been completely finished since its inception way back in uh, 2019. And that's why I took the break from social media because I was getting distracted uh, in somewhat a good way by posting a lot. Uh, but then that took away from the time that it took me to actually update and produce and create this course that I can now offer to the world that is going to change so many people's lives as it already has. More primitive versions have been released. Clients have gone through it. They've seen transformational transformations. And uh, it's uh, it's fantastic. And now it's updated and I'm very proud of it. It is my baby. The design is freaking amazing. I hired a design team, shout out to Freedom Builders and the team there. They did a fantastic job. We're still working on it. So that it's, this isn't like the full announcement. There's still more to come. I'll record a whole podcast on... Uh, when it is, when we're launching, what it is, who it's for, all the good stuff. Um, but for now, I've been getting a lot of questions about it. I've been getting people asking me to coach them. I haven't taken any new clients for about two months now. I've been waiting for my last clients to finish up uh, the Captain's Lifestyle program. And then I could focus all my attention on building this next model. And it's almost ready, but we're not taking clients yet. So if you are interested in holistic lifestyle optimization, and you're a man who's looking to maximize his health, happiness, productivity, and impact on the world, then you can join the wait list to be the first to hear about the new and improved Captain's Lifestyle Program. All you got to do is click the link in the description and you'll be on the list. And a uh, little secret for you here. Well, it's not really secret, but some of the pretty cool is that just for signing up for the wait list, you get free access to my morning and evening rituals course, which normally I was charging $97 for. It's an in-depth explanation of my cages morning ritual and my 4 3 2, 1, 30 method nightly ritual. Uh, it goes in depth. And so I was selling that for 97 bucks. You guys get it for free simply by joining the wait list. Uh, you also get a complimentary captain's consultation call with me. So after you fill out your initial assessment, this is what uh, tells us how you rank on the optimization scale. And then we hop on that call and I give you strategies on how to improve immediately. Both of those are completely free. Normally I charge $200 for the call. Uh, the optimization rituals are $97. You get it just by typing in your email and saying, hey, I want more information when this new program launches. So join the wait list. It's, uh, it's going to be exciting. This is going to be big. I'm really looking forward to it. And before we dive into today's interview with Dr. Eric Wan, talking about how we can change our brain waves, I want to give you a word from our sponsors, all of which can actually help your brain function better. First up, this episode is brought to you by Lambs, which is my favorite EMF blocking clothing company. They use silver in their clothes to block up to 99% of EMF radiation, which causes oxidative stress in the body that leads to a whole host of issues, things like brain fog, fatigue, trouble sleeping, uh, irritability, inflammation, 
and if exposed to more chronically, even more serious conditions like Alzheimer's, dementia, and even cancer. So that's why I wear Lambs. My favorite product of theirs is their beanie. I wear this uh, while I sleep, like during my sleep, because not only am I protecting my billion dollar supercomputer, AKA my brain from the effects of oxidative stress, it's also doubling as an eye mask because I pull it all the way over my eyes. So I'm not getting any light into my eyeballs while I sleep. And as you will hear in this podcast, uh, Dr. Juan touches on the importance of high quality sleep. So help your brain, help your brain and help the rest of your body by wearing antioxidants. That's literally what LAMS is, is wearable antioxidants, because it's, again, it's protecting you from the effects of oxidative stress. To get the hookup on anything from LAMS, head over to getlams.com, enter code Captain Morgan. That will save you 10% on the world's healthiest clothing. Bonus for each order, they also donate five meals to Feeding America. So it's a win, win, win. You're healthier simply by wearing clothes and you're feeding five hungry families. So again, head over to get lambs, enter code Captain Morgan, or click the link in the show notes. Next up, this podcast is brought to you by Aries, which is this EMF protection device that I wear. Uh, they also make stickers. I've got one on the back of my phone. I've got one on my computer. Um, I've got them throughout the house because I cannot control my EMF environments. Uh, I'm living with my parents right now. I can't turn off the Wi-Fi router because I go to bed earlier than everybody and they're still using the Wi-Fi. So instead, I put these EMF modulation devices from Aries all over our house. And the cool thing about them is that they've got different products and different products with different ranges. So this one that I've got around my neck, this has an effective range of about 12 square feet. This little sticker that you can place anywhere has got an effective range of around six square feet and they make uh, bigger ones for like a whole room. So super versatile. I wear this with me all the time. So I'm protected even when I'm traveling in EMF uh, ridden cities like LA and Minneapolis, where there's 5G towers all over the place. And how this works is it draws in the chaotic energy and modulates it to where it's less harmful to the human body. And I'm going to have them on the podcast sometime in August so I can explain this to you guys better because Aries products don't actually block the MFs. They just make it so it's less harmful to the body. To get the hookup on anything from Aries, head over to, I believe it's uh, Aries Tech dot com and enter code Captain Morgan. That will save you an exclusive discount, something that nobody else gets for being a listener of the Captain's Lifestyle Podcast. Again, that's 25% off at AriesTech.com enter code Captain Morgan or click the link in the show notes. Next up, this episode is brought to you by Waveblock. Kind of on the similar note to Aries there, if my camera decides to focus, there we go. This EMF blocking sticker that I stick on the back of my phone. So what's different about WaveBlock is WaveBlock actually blocks some of the EMFs from being emitted to you. So they make stickers for iPhones and they make stickers for AirPods because if you're wearing AirPods, you're literally blasting the Bluetooth right into your ears. With these WaveBlock stickers, it's blocking some of that radiation. Uh, same thing with the phone. You just stick it on the back and you're protected. I now feel safe keeping my phone in my pocket on airplane mode still with the WaveBlock sticker on there. Again, WaveBlock is offering an exclusive discount for listeners of the Captain's Lifestyle Podcast. Head over to waveblock.com and enter code Captain Morgan. That will save you 20% on these EMF blocking stickers. And last but certainly not least, this episode is brought to you by HVMN and specifically their new product, Ketone IQ. This is amazing. I'm sure you've heard me talk about this stuff before because it truly has been a game changer for me. I take one serving every single morning for mental clarity. Uh, so that's how it can help your brain because your brain runs off of glucose and it can also run off of ketones. So my brain is running off of ketones in the morning up until about the afternoon when I break, um, or not break my fast, but when I first have carbs up until then, it's fats and moderate amounts of protein. And I kick my mornings off with ketone IQ and it's been phenomenal. You can also use it for a pre-workout. I take two servings before workouts and I 
still continue to flabbergast myself on the physical endurance effects that running on ketones provides. It's phenomenal. Truly. I, I just gifted a bottle to one of my friends who works at the gym that I go to. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to see what he notices too. So to get the hookup on anything from, uh, HVMN, I definitely recommend trying out their ketones Head over to HVMN.com enter code captain Morgan 10, that will save you 10% on the most affordable drinkable ketones. There are other ketones out there. Uh, these are definitely the cheapest and they also taste better than a lot of other exogenous ketone supplements. So again, use code captain Morgan 10 that will hook you up. All right. Now let's dive into today's interview with Dr. Eric Wan. Hello, hello, and welcome aboard another episode of the Captain's Lifestyle Podcast. This is your captain speaking, Taylor Morgan. On today's episode, we have another special guest. His name is Dr. Eric Wan. Eric is the president and chief medical officer of Wave Neuroscience. Before that, Eric served as the chief physician and chief technology officer for the Boeing company. He also served as a U.S. Navy flight surgeon for Marine Medium Helicopter Squadron 268 and received the distinction of serving as the aviation combat element flight surgeon for the 11th Marine Expeditionary Unit. He received his master's in public health from the Harvard School of Public Health and Masters. Uh, he also has a master's in business administrations from the University of Southern California Marshall School of Business. Dr. Eric Wan, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. It's really a pleasure to be here with you. So let's discuss your military background for a second. Uh, We were were talking before we started recording, um, both coming from the military. I was in the Marine Corps. Um, So I heard that you had a pretty life-changing experience back in 2003 that kind of led you down this path of neuroscience that you're on now. Can you get into that a little bit for us? Sure, sure. Yeah, so I had the great privilege of deploying with the Marines. Uh, As you mentioned, I I was a Navy flight surgeon. Uh, Some of my buddies would say I was a squid among the grunts, (laughs) Um, but uh, loved my time uh, with the Marines. And uh, we deployed overseas and had uh, the unfortunate distinction of uh, having some of the first casualties of Operation Iraqi Freedom. And uh, as a byproduct of that, Uh, I had a lot of really close friends, brothers and sisters who were struggling uh, with grief and post-traumatic stress. And uh, the signature injury of that conflict was concussion and traumatic brain injury. And so when I left the service, I was always on the lookout for something that might help. And um, uh, completed my my medical training at the Harvard Hospitals, uh, Mass General and Brigham and Women's, and then uh, found myself at the Boeing Company and uh, was really happy with my work there. It was a uh, very gratifying work. When one of my pilots and air crew came to me and said, hey, we tried out this technology uh, in Newport Beach and uh, it really helped quite a bit. Um, they were talking about sort of brain fog and headaches uh, and um, this depression they were going through. And so I, I did some diligence, spent actually a couple of years talking to local neurologists and a specialist in the area and really came around to believing that this could change really the way we treat many of these uh, injuries and uh, joined the company about six years ago. And it's been a full sprint ever since. Love it. So let's, let's get into that. What is wave neuro and why is it this breakthrough technology? Yeah. So wave neuroscience is uh, fundamentally it's sort of, it's a SaaS software company, but we've uh, innovated in a way where neuroscience technologies um, can be uh, personalized to each individual and deliver treatment um, in a more precision guided manner um, with uh, significantly greater efficacy uh, than we've seen in the past. And just to walk you through all of that step-by-step um, the first thing we do is we get what's called an electroencephalogram. It's a type of brain imaging uh, where we look at the electrophysiologic health of the brain. Mm-hmm. So much in the same way, an EKG uh, gives you an electrophysiologic picture of the heart. Uh, we're capturing neuroimages of the brain, and we're looking for areas of disruption in the oscillatory function. And so the second step is to conduct some computational neuroanalytics, uh, find areas that may not be functioning as well as they could, 
uh, and then we're using what's called neuromodulation, uh, transcranial magnetic stimulation. We can geonavigate to any area of the brain and provide gentle stimulation to activate uh, neurons, or in some cases, slow them down. And just to uh, drill down on that a bit, most of us have uh, a dominant frequency or wavelength with which we're encoding information, usually somewhere between eight and 13 Hertz, which means we're encoding information eight to 13 times per second. Um, so in a hypothetical scenario, you may be a 12 Hertz brain and I may be a nine Hertz brain. It doesn't matter. It's just sort of where we're born. Uh, there's certain characteristics and features that are uh, associated with those uh, wavelengths. But in the scenario where you were a 12 Hertz brain, and if you uh, took a blow to, let's say, the front of the head, and we saw those neurons were firing at five hertz, we could pretty comfortably point to those and share with you that that may be manifesting as a certain group of symptoms. And in the prefrontal cortex, it tends to be executive function. So you might be feeling lethargic, uh, not wanting to get out of bed and uh, be lacking motivation. Um, and we would move to those areas and provide the stimulation to hopefully uh, activate them and get them uh, moving in the right direction. And in a separate scenario, if you took a hit to the right backhand side of the brain where the visual cortex resides, and if that was cycling at 30 hertz, now you're oversampling your environment 30 times per second, uh, but maybe only able to process it at 12 times per second. And that information mismatch, because there's an information overload, may manifest as anxiety. And so just as imaging has become an important part of um, individuals coming in, you know, we've heard very frequently, my healing journey started once I was able to visualize these disruptions in brain activity. Um, and then we close the loop by providing uh, treatment to those areas. So that's, that's sort of it in a nutshell. What brainwave is that eight to 13 Hertz that you mentioned? We call it the alpha frequency. That's uh, alpha. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I thought that most people were operating day-to-day -day life in beta to high beta. So like so this sort of stressed out state, right? Yeah. Yeah. So beta is faster, faster frequency activity. And I should clarify when we're getting these EEGs, we're getting them eyes closed resting. So it's called default. Okay. Mode. And we're looking for the default mode network. Um, and you're correct when your eyes are open and you're active throughout your day-to-day -day activity, you're usually in the beta range, which is 13 Hertz and higher. And then you can get to the gamma range when you're really fast, when you're in task acquisition mode or, or you're learning many times you'll be in, um, uh, sort of that gamma range in different areas of the brain, mm -hmm. uh, but you, you're correct. So those are important distinctions to make. Um, and yeah, so during your day-to-day -day activity, you may find yourself in a, a much faster frequency. Gotcha. Okay. So I, I think it would be beneficial for people if we were to go over the different brain waves and the, I guess, how the brain functions and the purpose behind each one of them. So like we just mentioned, wakefulness is beta, essentially it's this high alertness. So um, and then that can get into high beta, correct? Which is the more uh, anxious and stressed out and on edge. Am I on the right track here? I'll stop explaining it. I'll let you explain it. You're the expert. No, you're, you're actually, you're quite on the spot. And so um, uh, those, are, those are great explanations of, of beta alpha uh, is also during your wakeful state, but it tends to be um, more robust uh, over time in terms of uh, this is your brain at rest and the slower waves, your theta and delta uh, tend to be when you're winding down, when you're sleeping. Um, and in fact, if you go into a sleep lab, for example, they'll put an EEG on you and they'll measure you. And the more restful restorative stages of sleep tend to be the, the deep, sleep, deep sleep when you're in uh, delta. And when the waves slow down, you're able to restore um, sort of ATP and, uh, there's a whole series of events that occur to allow, uh, the brain to reset. It's sort of a, a emotional convalescence when you're, when you're sleeping. And so that's why there's so much emerging science and evidence to point towards sleep as being a fundamental, uh, critical piece of our existence and longevity. Um, a whole lot, we could talk for hours on that, but, uh, you know, I, I saw in your series that you, you've done quite a bit of uh, discussion on sleep already. 
Oh man. Uh, yeah. Almost every high performer who I've interviewed, they bring up sleep, quality sleep as one of the key performance indicators on why they're able to operate at such a high level. I just yeah had uh, Devin Burke, who's the sleep expert on the show talking about sleep. So I hope my audience is very well versed in <laughs> sleep and how, so here's, here's what we could get into now is how can sleep or sleep loss damage our brain and make essentially everything more difficult? Oh, wow. Yeah. So this is one of the more exciting areas in neuroscience and, um, you know, every advance has sort of a cascade effect or ripple effect. And there was, there are mechanisms with which we can do, um, very high resolution uh, neuroimaging in real time. And so we call this two photon microscopy. And there's a discovery uh, by a researcher by the name of Macon Nettergaard, where she realized uh, during deep sleep, these slow wave stages of sleep, uh, there are cells within our brain that actually shrink in size dramatically and open up channels with which cerebral spinal fluid uh, rushes through and uh, washes away the oxidative stress of the day. We call it the glymphatic system. Um, and uh, if you're sleep deprived and you don't get into these deep stages of sleep, um, that sanitation exercise does not occur. And there is a beautiful study uh, done uh, at a Washington university where it would be hard to do the study these days because the impact of the finding was so significant, but they sleep deprived individuals for just one day. And they did a lumbar puncture to analyze the cerebral spinal fluid. And they found a dramatic increase in beta amyloid and tau protein. Wow. And if that sounds familiar, those are the two proteins that are hallmarks as precursors to Alzheimer's disease. Mm -hmm. And so you can imagine this is just after one night of sleep deprivation. If people are chronically sleep deprived through, let's just say sleep apnea or some form of insomnia, um, there's a lot of concern that if you accumulate uh, more of these uh, tau proteins and beta amyloid and they phosphorylate, they can turn into what are called neurofibrillatory tangles. And those do um, cause some disruption in neuronal oscillatory activity and brain function. And uh, the weight of the evidence is leading us to believe that may be causal uh, to the development of cognitive decline and dementia. Mm -hmm. So um, very long-winded way of saying, uh, hopefully to the audience, that sleep really is critical and fundamental, uh, not just for the current day, feeling restored and vibrant and active, uh, but also long-term in warding off some of the decline that's been associated with aging. Yeah. Absolutely. So what do you say to those hard charging entrepreneurs out there who wear it as a badge of honor and think that they're getting by on less sleep? Yeah, it's interesting. There's, there's sort of this, um, and uh, you know, this, this may have been my generation, but there's sort of the sleep machismo where, you know, I'll sleep when I die and <laughs> yeah. uh, you just push through it. And um, some of some of the most outspoken leaders who had talked about, that type of uh, mentality, Ronald Reagan and Margaret Thatcher, sadly passed away of Alzheimer's disease. Mm -hmm. And so my feedback would be, you may be functioning really at a 50 to 60% capacity when you chronically sleep deprive yourself. And if you are getting good restful sleep, um, you know these problems may be solved in a more efficient and timely manner. And it's interesting, uh, there's a sleep researcher out of Berkeley, formerly uh, a professor at Harvard named Matthew Walker, who mm. uh, famously has pointed out, uh, we're the only species in nature that voluntarily deprives itself of sleep. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm as guilty of that as anyone. You know, we try to get to that last email and push through the fatigue, but really we're sabotaging ourselves. And it's not a linear equation. If you get one night of bad sleep, it usually takes two or three to catch up. Mm -hmm. And if you string together several nights of bad sleep, you, you're starting to really do yourself harm. Yeah. And I used to be there back when I was in the Marine Corps, especially uh, before I knew everything I know now about holistic living. Uh, I struggled with sleep and stress, as I'm sure most of the guys who you're in with as well struggled with. Uh, and I didn't know at the time. So I was just like popping sleeping pills and, uh, you know, had no idea what 
optimal sleep really was and how good I could feel. So what do you say to those guys who they're not hard charging entrepreneurs, but they're still in the Marine Corps or the military and they're going out on these operations and staying up for nights on end, super stressed out uh, and or shift workers for that matter. I get a lot of questions on shift workers. So what are just some basic things that that they can do to optimize their brain? Yeah, interestingly, I, I think there's increasing knowledge uh, of the deficits that occur when you're you're not getting restful sleep, and specific to the veteran community or those uh, who are who are uniformed and active duty, you think about the scenario that we were in. You're going 18 time zones away into a combat environment. You tend to operate at night because you have the tactical advantage of night vision, and um, it's sort of the perfect setup for really quite profound. Uh, circadian rhythm disruption. And, and so if you're trying to sleep during the day when the sun is out and trying to operate at night, um, it's really hard to get that back. And you do that for, you know, these are typically six month pumps, uh, deployments um, for those who weren't in the military, we, we sometimes <laughs> call them pumps. Yeah. But, um, you know, if you're operating at night, you're turning wrenches at, you know, when you can and just sleeping whenever there's a minute here and there, um, you know, when you're young, you can function, you can get by, but uh, there's always a price to pay. And I, I think part of the challenge when people come back home, it, it's really hard to get back into that natural circadian rhythm. There is, uh, I think, uh, at least for myself when I was younger and before uh, a lot of the science caught up, uh, we'll just suck it up, we'll get through and it'll be fine. Uh, when in fact, there, there are best practices that can be employed uh, to reestablish circadian rhythm. And, and maybe one of the really key messages if the audience can walk away with uh, today is the importance of blue light. Um, I'm sure that's been discussed at some point uh, in the series, but uh, blue spectrum light is 450 to 500 nanometer light, most intense in the early morning, what we call low solar angle light. Um, and when blue light uh, touches receptors in your eye called melanopsins, it establishes a biological chain reaction where about 16 hours later, there will be a good spike in melatonin that will allow you to get into very deep sleep. Um, but there's all sorts of ways that we have engineered and manufactured mechanisms to sabotage ourselves uh, from getting yep. that deep sleep. And so the first tip I would give is get outside in the morning, uh, get unfiltered blue light, don't wear sunglasses, um, and whether it's just having a bowl of cereal outside, taking a, the dog for a walk in the park, just be outside, get that blue light and it, it starts your circadian rhythm. Uh, conversely, as we wind down in the evening, let's say around 5 PM, try to avoid blue light, uh, because your system is starting to wind down and, uh, whether it's, um, screen time or, uh, other mechanisms, you know, that, that kind of blue light can trick your body into being stimulated and awake. Many times it's just the content. I think uh, many of us are guilty. You know, we'll watch Netflix at 10 PM and it's game of Thrones. It's very stimulating, you know, whatever it is um, that doesn't allow our body uh, to really wind down. So the second thing is uh, just to avoid blue light stimulation late in the evening, uh, have your last meal and your last calories early on, let's say six to 7 PM and to give your body a chance to, to wind down. And uh, when, we, when we follow those habits, uh, Mother Nature does kind of take over, uh, but it's really hard to do that in a disciplined and regimented manner. Yeah, yeah, especially if you are uh, like shift work or still in the military, it, it is very difficult. So how can Wave Neuro help with that? Like, is that, because uh, I imagine it's changing your brain waves, correct? So it can help with sleep. Right. right. So chronic sleep disruption can cause abnormalities in oscillatory function. And what we found, one of the first things patients tell us is I got the most restful night of sleep that I've had in years. Mm. And that's usually a very good prognostic indicator that somebody's going to have a positive response. And our, our early data, 83% of uh, people with traumatic brain injuries, this is in the veteran community have had a positive response, but what's a little bit different. Um, I am not a fan, like I'm not an anti-pharma guy, but many of these hypnotics like Ambien or Sonata, uh, what they are doing is helping with sleep latency, meaning they're helping you to fall asleep faster. 
Uh, unfortunately, they can be very destructive to sleep architecture. Now, sleep architecture refers to REM and non-REM sleep, these stages of sleep. Uh, many times the progression of sleep gets uh, interrupted and you never get into the deep restorative stages of sleep like stage three and REM sleep. Uh, so unlike that uh, feature of the hypnotic medications, uh, neuromodulation appears to benefit sleep architecture where people are getting uh, a higher proportion of their sleep will be in those more restorative stages of sleep. And we conducted a study, a uh, double-blind randomized control trial, where we found compared to placebo, uh, the subjects who are getting active treatment were getting more restorative sleep. And as a byproduct, we're embarking upon uh, new studies where we'd like to do full in-lab polysomnograms, these sleep studies, uh, to better characterize uh, how much improvement we're seeing quantitatively uh, in the deep stages of sleep. And uh, that may help people with primary insomnia and other types of sleep disorders. Absolutely, it will. Uh, and with everything else that's going on in their life, I, I say all the time, sleep is the rising tide that raises all ships. Once you dial in the quality of your sleep, everything else starts to improve. So how does this technology actually work? You guys have in-person locations, but then you also have the Sonal, which you can do at home, correct? Right. So we've developed a, a take-home product that's a wellness device. It's uh, a fraction of the energy of the medical device. And we found that uh, we're able to impart um, positive changes even at, at a much lower energy level. And this has kind of opened up to us, this discussion. Uh, you know, as a, as a physician, our, our mission is about saving lives and stamping out disease. And uh, while that's still a core part of our ethos, um, you know, this performance and neuro optimization space has been uh, kind of fascinating to observe. So now the philosophy has changed where you don't have to be broken to want to be better or to mm. want to be well. And so if people were now seeing NFL, NBA, professional athletes, UFC fighters, US Olympians, uh, the coaches of these teams and clubs, and it's really been uh, kind of dizzying to see how quickly uh, the industry has rallied around, you know, if we can help sleep and there's been uh, some preliminary data where we're improving heart rate variability. Um, there's so many applications to that. And where my mind goes is, can we be preventative? Right. And so if people are chronically sleep deprived and we can interrupt uh, that succession of uh, poor nights of sleep and, and give people uh, good quality sleep, could you ward off some of the, um, uh, you know, aging deficits that occur? Could we give people um, better quality of life, uh, whatever stage that they are uh, in terms of uh, the aging process? And those are all areas of research that need to be embarked upon and quantified. Uh, but very quickly, we've realized that um, this is a uh, market where uh, there's, uh, you know, really a lot of interest. And, you know, what we owe, I think, to the community is uh, doing good academically rigorous research uh, to quantify what those benefits are. Mm. Well, I'll say from my perspective, as not being affiliated with Wave Neuro, once you change your brainwaves, you can change whatever you want in your life. Uh, I just, I was at a week long Dr. Joe Dispenza advanced meditation retreat and I, I won't go into that. I recorded a podcast on it, but basically once we're able to shift out of high beta, essentially stressed out, anxious all the time, reliving the past, worried about what could potentially happen in the future. That's what causes a lot of physical ailments in the body and stress and inflammation. And once you can change those stories and drop into alpha brainwaves and to gamma even, then you can create a new reality for yourself, whether that's reducing your anxiety, whether that's overcoming PTSD. Uh, so talk to us about who this is for, like, what are some of the, I guess, diagnoses that you have seen this technology most effective at treating? Yeah, there, there's a wide range of applications. Uh, I should first mention uh, we do have two initiatives uh, that were generously funded by Special Operations Care Fund and Tomahawk Charitable Foundation. They've 
funded any special operations veteran who is interested in treatment can come to our San Diego office um, and we would treat them uh, for free. Wow. The second initiative is through the Wounded Warrior Project where conventional force uh, veterans can also come in. And so uh, open door invitation to any veteran who has served, uh, please give us a call. You can visit our website um, it's wavenarrow.com and, uh, the participating centers are in San Diego, uh, and Cardiff, which is, uh, in Encinitas. Mm. Um, so that's for the military community. Uh, we're seeing more and more people come in for human performance, whether they're fortune 500 CEOs or elite athletes, Olympians, um, and anyone who just has an interest in understanding, uh, cognitively, how are they doing? Um, I think it's worth getting an EEG just to have that discussion and see where they are, uh, baseline yourself. And what's been exciting, we're working with a lot of thought leaders in, in the industry to be able to measure longitudinally how these changes are occurring. And, you know, we just talked about meditation. If on day zero, we get an EEG and there's 30 to 60 days where a new behavior is introduced, whether it's transcendental meditation uh, a clean diet, a new exercise regimen, uh, we might be able to measure that change over time and see how it impacts uh, brain function. And that ultimately can be a very powerful behavior modifier in itself as well. Mm. So what's the difference between going to the in-person clinic versus getting the sonal? Uh, the biggest difference is when, when we go to the in-clinic um, treatment, This we call it magnetic EEG guided resonance therapy or MERT, um, that is physician supervised. And so there will be uh, an MD or DO on site who will do a full uh, intake and um, that's all uh, very streamlined and, and regimented. Uh, the sonal is more of, we do need to get an EEG and then a customized protocol will be provided to you. Uh, but these are units that people could uh, take home with themselves. Uh, or, you know, at many of these centers, they will have them and uh, you could come in and, and get the treatment at the center itself uh, without having to have oversight from uh, one of the physicians. And so um, they're both providing uh, forms of stimulation um, and there, there's pros and cons with each, but, uh, there's a convenience factor with the Sonal that, um, we think is pretty, um, pretty game changing. And, uh, you know, if our mission and our charter is to make this technology as accessible and reachable as possible to as many people as possible, uh, this is, it's an important tool for us to get it out there. What are some of the benefits that people are seeing after using this? Yeah. So, the most common thing that we hear is improvement in sleep quality. Um, there's, we've seen some improvements in reaction time. There's something called Stroop testing. Um, I, I won't bore you with too much of the detail, but uh, it's a computerized neuropsych where uh, you're given a task. Let's say you spell the word that pops up on the screen. We call that linear processing speed. And then they introduce a challenge. So the color blue will pop up on the screen, but you have to type purple or uh, red versus blue. And so there's a cognitive challenge and we measure those reaction times. And we've, we've seen uh, some improvements, which may not sound as significant because it's the millisecond range, uh, but we've had some um, athletes and race car drivers mention that, you know, it may have been the difference between them being on the podium versus not placing. And so whether it's on the battlefield or on the playing field, that can be a difference maker. Uh, we also hear a lot about focus, attention, concentration. Um, and so, uh, you know, these are sort of in the wellness human performance realm. Uh, we've also done dedicated clinical trials. Um, one of the more recent ones conducted on the Sonal, and it was researched as STMS, synchronized transcranial magnetic stimulation. Uh, but they found a, a, quite a substantial benefit for post-traumatic stress disorder. And so we're now embarking uh, upon uh, larger studies uh, with academic partners to see if we can get an FDA approval for that. So um, just to be clear, like I can't make any representations that um, you know this is a cure or disease modifying or anything like that, but we're seeing some early signals that are quite promising. Mm -hmm. And how does this actually work? Like, is this technology directly changing your brainwaves? 
Yeah, so the TMS device is certainly doing that. It's enough energy where it can cause what's called an evoke potential or an action potential to trigger. And um, that activation uh, can modify um, uh, the firing of neurons. And, uh, you know, we're able to shape uh, waves in that manner. Uh, the sonal is a much lower energy level and it's creating an environment with which uh, we can encourage neurons to fire at a specified rate, uh, but it's not actually triggering the action potential. So slightly different mechanisms, one more gentle than the other. They're both um, fairly pleasant experiences. Uh, this is not like, you know, electroshock therapy or anything <laughs> like that, that uh, uh, can be quite painful and uh, difficult. Although I will say for the proper populations, those can be really beneficial. So I'm not trying to, um, uh, you know, dissuade anyone from pursuing those if they have major depression that's treatment resistant. Uh, it's a wonderful therapy, but uh, I, I just mentioned that to highlight. Um, this is not that. It's it's a much easier um, and gentler technology. Mm -hmm. And I can imagine, at least uh, with the sonal, it looks like could be made more effective when combined with binaural beats. Have you guys played around with that at all? We have. It's actually yeah. So you're. Um, it, it's a brilliant question because as we let's say create stacks of therapy or combine modalities. Um, this is, I think where the future is going. And so binaural beats, yes, you can specify uh, a frequency. You can tune it to alpha. Um, we've uh, started exploring photic therapy uh, where you can do uh, specified uh, frequencies of light stimulation. Um, we're now embarking upon a, a clinical trial combining uh, or looking at psychedelics in combination with the therapy, those have to be very well controlled due to uh, some of the legal elements uh, involved. But I think probably a lot of your audience is aware there is um, intense interest in research coming from the psychedelic space, whether it's psilocybin or ibogaine or um, MDMA. Yeah, the, the early data looks quite good. Um, so... And really, I hope that's the overarching message is uh, where it feels like, you know, this space, whether it's mental health or uh, behavioral health, whatever we want to call it, uh, may have been stagnant. Uh, there's so much innovation that's occurring right now. And if there was ever a time where there was reason for hope and optimism, uh, really, this is, uh, this is the time there is uh, a rising tide of really promising innovations that can change the way uh, that we're approaching these things. And so if any of your audience is struggling, even those who are interested from that are super high functioning and just looking for performance gains, um, you know, there's, there's so much emerging. Uh, it's really an exciting time to be in the space and to be learning. Speaking of that, what is one thing that you are most excited for? Oh, it's a great question. Um, there's so many things, but I think these combination therapies um, are, are showing a lot of the promise because um, whether it's through, you know, genetic phenotypes or, uh, you know, we're so diverse uh, as a species, uh, I don't know if there's one type of technology or one type of pharmaceutical that's going to be a panacea. Uh, and so I think as we create protocols uh, where people can get the benefit of uh, multiple modalities, uh, now we can really start helping not just individuals, uh, but as one individual, you know, goes on their healing journey and improves, uh, the family unit improves, and then you have communities and populations that are all getting better. Um, and so I think in the next 10 years, we're really going to uh, make powerful strides towards uh, some of these protocols where we can combine modalities and uh, really make a difference and you know, some of the most effective things are available and free. Now we, we talked about meditation, um, you know, yoga, a, a lot of these things, gratitude, these things are readily available to us. And I think sometimes we take them for granted. Uh, but then you add upon that a lot of the technological innovation that's occurring, whether it's neuromodulation or, uh, you know, there's now cognitive behavioral therapy combined with psychedelics. That's what MDMA is being researched under, um, we're really going to see, I think, an explosion uh, of 
wonderful technologies and therapeutics over the next decade. I hope so. I'm looking forward to it. All right. Where can we find more about you and everything you've got going on at Wave Neuro? Yeah, waveneuro.com is our website. We have a, a presence on most of the social media platforms, uh, Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram. And so uh, please feel free to, uh, to visit uh, our platforms. And um, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to write in and uh, you know, I'll give you my contact information for the show notes and uh, happy to field any questions. Awesome. Dr. Juan, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you.